If you don't already have Quartz Composer installed on your machine, you, know, you need to go to the uh, developer website uh, for Apple. Uh, this link, developer.apple.com slash downloads, it will request you to log in at that point. Uh, the account is the same as your App Store user account where you uh, usually go to log in to download apps. And you'll end up at this page. Now the file that you're looking for is graphics tools for Xcode. And this used to be bundled with the full Xcode package, but they broke it off as a separate download. It is a free download, no charge for this. And you see it's quite a small download, this one about 45 meg. You need to, however, make sure you get the right version. So here's graphic tools for Xcode 7, if you're on the latest version of OS X Capitan. If we come down a little, if you're on a slightly older version, uh, Yosemite graphics tools for Xcode 6.3, and we can continue down. If I can find them, graphics tool here, late August 2014. Okay. So make sure you get the correct one. They are very similar, but you might have issues running it if you have a slightly different version of OS X. So make sure you get the one that is closest to the version of OS X that you're using. Okay, so download this. Uh, you'll get a image file, which you need to extract. A little tip here, if I right click, get info, Make sure you choose the option to run in 32-bit mode here, okay? Can be an issue with certain plugins won't run with the 64-bit version of the app. Not always an issue, but there are some really good free additional plugins out there that will enhance the, the workflow in Quartz. So, open Quartz. You'll be presented with uh, this window which is the template chooser. Feel free to try some of these others later. I'm just going to go for basic composition at the minute. You'll be presented with two or three windows, okay? Uh, if these are missing, it may be you need to click on the appropriate button on the menu so the patch library is available here and the viewer available here, okay? Uh, just to explain these, the library, patch library is where you find all the patches, objects that you use to create your patch. And these are just dragged in like so, or you can double click and it will appear. Okay, then we have the editor itself, which is where you construct your patch, you get your objects, string them together. And then the viewer window is where the output, the visualization, the graphics will be displayed. To relate these to uh, Max MSP jitter terms, this, the library is the object palette. This is the patcher editor where you construct your max patches. And then here we have the jitter window, a floating jitter window. So these are the equivalents that you might be familiar with if you're coming from a max MSP background. So uh, let's start. You can scroll down all the object list, but a quick way to find something is to type it here into the search box. And then you'll get a list here of objects with this name or related objects. I'm just going to go for the second one now. And you may notice here we have a cube drawn in the window. It's not obviously a cube because it just looks like a square. We can only see one side of it. So I'm just going to make this rotate a little. Uh, fairly mechanically at the minute using an LFO. Okay. So I'll just connect this to the X and Y 
rotation. You'll see this starts to move a little bit, but I want it to go all the way around. So to find the parameters for the LFO, a couple of ways of doing it. You can go onto the patch inspector, or more simply click on the parameters button here, and we get uh, the available parameters for the LFO. So it's a sine wave, different types of wave, period is the duration, so let's just change this to 20, and the amplitude, to get a full rotation, and go 180 with an offset of 180. Now you can see it's rotating, looks a little bit like a cube, not particularly obvious. If I change the colours, okay, we can now see the different sides of the cube, okay. Alternatively, I can use images, so I've got a couple of images here, I can drag these straight into quartz, like so, and I'll just put this onto some of the surfaces. And now you can see we've got an image on each of the surfaces. Okay, so it's looking great. I can full screen this, give you more of an idea. Very nice. Okay, but let's say uh, it looks it looks pretty good as it is, but what I want to do is be able to manually rotate this. Uh, and see the some of the lighting effects. So, first thing, let's put it inside a lighting patch. And this is where it gets a little interesting. Create a lighting object, okay. Cut this. Now we can go inside by double clicking here, okay paste the objects. So now we're within a lighting patch. The cube looks kind of the same, but if I come to the parameters, we get the lighting options. Okay, so if I just take this off a little bit, adjust the shininess, the specularity and so on. You can see the different lighting effects, and it looks a lot more realistic, okay. Alright, so far so good. Next thing, however, I want to manually rotate this, so... Go for the trackball, okay, delete the LFO, put these within the trackball and now using the mouse I can actually physically grab this and rotate it around. Okay, just to make that a little bit more obvious I'll change the dimensions of the cube, okay, back in here, and now we have an oblong box that we can rotate, ace.